All right, folks, here we go. Uh, sorry I got into this video uh, this morning and got about eight minutes in and realized I had unmuted myself. So that was pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty exciting. So um, here we go. Uh, unit five, day three notes. Uh, we're going to review the applied force and normal force, and then I'm going to show you stack blocks. Okay? So here we go. Uh, Start off with homework. The first problem on homework, uh, Paloma hands a 13 kilogram boy to 61 kilogram Stephanie, um, who stands on the platform. We want to figure out what is their normal force that the, sorry, that uh, exerts, is exerted by the platform onto Stephanie. So a couple things that we see here, we've got a 13 kilogram boy, we got a 61 kilogram Stephanie, all right? We want to know what is the normal force being exerted. So. If we just figure out their weight, that's going to be 13 plus 61. So that's 74 times a negative 9.8. So their weight will be negative 725.2. Remember, weight's going downwards. That's why it's negative. All right. Now, our normal force, though, according to Newton's third law, is an equal and opposite force. Right. So what we see is if it's 725 downwards, then the, the platform is pushing up with 725.2 Newtons upwards all right now what ends up starting to happen here is is we start to get rid of this concept of weight and we just start to work our normal force calculation all right meaning that our gravitational pull is just going to be 9.8 from this point on going forward okay so last chapter we talked about the surface of the of a of like a floor here being frictionless all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take this stick person we're going to push on a crate all right so if this meant for us, if we had an applied force from the stick person, then if that surface is truly frictionless, all of that applied force would turn into our unbalanced force. Meaning that when we look at this concept, even the smallest, tiniest little bit of force is gonna allow that thing to move, right? And again, the reason being the surface is a frictionless surface. So if we were to, for giggles, say, all right, the crate has a mass of 125 kilograms the stick person pushes with a force of 100 newtons. What would be the acceleration? So what we see here is, is they're using an applied force to go forward, all right? Now, remember, when we talk about this applied force, really what we're seeing here is that our fun is equal to our applied, sorry, it's gonna take, oh man, that was bad. This is gonna take a bit. So if you want to fast forward this, minus the force of friction. All right, there we go. I think you get the gist of it, right? So in this case, because we don't have, or because we have a frictionless surface, what that means for us is that our friction is basically non-existent. So we see our unbalanced force is the same as our applied force, all right? So once we see that, then we can go ahead and take take care of the rest of this form, this uh, problem, okay? So our unbalanced force is equal to ma, remember Newton's second law fund equals ma. So if we know that, that's 100 Newton force with 125 kilogram crate, we divide 100 by 125, and we see that our acceleration here should be 0.8 meters per second per second without any friction involved, okay? So the question then, because, not a, because the world that we live in doesn't have frictionless surfaces, what does friction do for us? So in this chapter, we started to introduce this last week. So we asked, what, fr what direction will friction act in this scenario? So for us, if we apply that force going forward, then our friction should always oppose motion, right? Meaning that if we see this thing, friction should be going back against that box or that crate, right? Um, if we increase our applied force, then obviously we can have that be you know, relevant to our force of friction. Now, it is completely possible if our box is heavy enough and the force of friction is high enough that we can't move that box. You know what I mean? Meaning that you've probably had really, really heavy objects that you've tried to push and move. And guess what? You can't. Why? Because the force of friction and the normal force are too big for us. They don't allow us to have a large enough applied force to be able to overcome that, right? So, for giggles here again, we're going to say there's a 100 Newton force being applied that way, right? And it's applied to a 125 kilogram crate. But now there's a 75 Newton force going back against it. 
We want to know what is the fun and what is the acceleration of the crate. All right. First and foremost, is this thing going to move? Yes, it should, right? The reason it should is because we see a 100 Newton force being pushed that way. We see a 75 Newton force being pushed that way. All right. So because of that, we see there is going to be movement to the right of the screen. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the unbalanced force. Remember now, unbalanced force means we're going to take that applied force and do what? Subtract off the friction, right? Because the friction is going to hinder us in moving this thing forward. Because it hinders us, what we're going to see is that our fun is going to be 25 newtons, all right? Now that we know our fun, we can use that just like we did in the previous one, all right? So if our unbalanced force is 25 newtons, the mass of the crate is 125 kilograms. Our acceleration here is going to be 25 divided by one by 125. We see that our acceleration is 0 0.2 meters per second. Now, did friction slow it down? Absolutely. It caused us to have to, it, it made us lose kind of some of that force, so to speak, right? If we had even more friction, likely now that acceleration is going to go down. If we had a less uh, a surface that had less friction, then we would see that acceleration go up, all right? Um, normal force then, next part. So we wanna know what is the normal force of this box? All right, well, if it's a 125 kilogram box, what we're gonna see is that the surface of this is gonna push up against that 125 kilogram box, right? So it's gonna be mg cosine of theta. So the box or the crate is 125 kilograms. The angle that we have it at is zero. The pull of gravity, or the g, 9.8. So we see 125 times 9.8 times the cosine of one. Cosine of one, or cosine of zero, is one. So 125 times 9.8 means that this thing's going to have a normal force of 1,225 newtons. All right? So that's our applied force, is how we push stuff forward. All right? This would be considered a pushing problem. Okay? Now, also understand, we can look at the normal force here as well. Yeah. All right, stack blocks and our normal force. Now, for us, up until this point, we've calculated our normal force on an angle. That was day one notes, right? Where we saw it at flat, at an angle, and at a 30 degree angle, right? With our stick person. We've also calculated two objects together. That was Stace, or Stephanie and the boy, right? For us, stack blocks looks at each portion to calculate the amount of force that is present. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to move the floor, so to speak quote unquote, all right? And see how does each stack or how does each box, you know, affect each one of those, all right? So this is what we'll see with stack blocks. This is the final look. So what we have here is basically three crates stacked on top of each other, okay? And this is the final kind of picture of it all. So, well, we don't want to start with the final. So what we're going to do is we're going to work from the floor up, right? So we'll start at the 150 kilograms. So for us, there's only one location for our normal force. And that location is between the crate and the floor. So all we have is that crate pushing down on the floor at this moment in time, right? So because of that, our normal force is still mg cosine theta. But in this case, all we have is 150 kilogram crate pushing down on it, right? So because we have 150 kilogram crate, we're just going to take that times 9.8 times the cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, remember? All right. So we see that's 1,470 newtons. So that's just the normal force for that one crate. Okay. Nothing too different there. Nothing too crazy there. All right. Now, when we introduce the second block or the second crate, now we actually have two different locations. The first one is between the crates, because remember, this 100 kilogram crate is pushing down on the 150. If the normal force is really, really strong, guess what happens to that 150 kilogram crate? It breaks it, right? If its weight is so incredibly high that it all of a sudden doesn't have the same normal force, it's gonna fall through, right? So that's why we see, hey, we've got a normal force here going upwards, okay? The other location is beneath both crates right? There's a reason why shelves are rated. If you go to like a Home Depot, a Lowe's, a Fleet Pharma, any place like that and buy shelves, they say, hey, this has a 500 pound limit. If you put 600 pounds on that shelf, guess what happens? It falls down, right? 
So that's why we always want to know how much weight we kind of are putting on that because we don't want our shelves to fall down in the middle of the night and stuff break. Okay. So beneath the crates is our second one. All right. So for the first one, between the crates. So when we look between the crates, we're looking right here, basically. Right. So that's where our floor is going to be. So what's pushing down? Only the 100 at that point. So because only the 100 is pushing down between those two, we see it has a normal force of 980 newtons pushing up against it, right? So that 100 kilograms is pushing down with 980. That 150 kilogram box is pushing back up with 980 newtons of force. Okay, so that's part one. Now, what we want to do is we want to look. Wait. Oh, this is sorry. This is supposed to be beneath. Right. So we're going to put that word in there. So that's supposed to be beneath the crates. Sorry about that. All right. So what that means is down on the floor right here. All right. So when we look at that, what is actually happening there? How much mass do we have pushing down? In this case, we've got both the 100 and the 150 together. So we've got 250. Right. So because we've got 250 times the 9.8 gives us 2,450 newtons of force pushing down altogether. Right. If you've ever moved, um, if you've ever moved boxes, right, or if you've ever moved stuff that you can stack, right, you grab one and you're like, okay, this is pretty light. All right, I'm going to put another one on top. Okay, that's still pretty light, right? And you can continue to add until you get to that point where your normal force of holding these things up no longer works, and you have to then all of a sudden move on and go. Okay. All right. So now, three locations, right? So for us, the three locations are between this one and this one, between the 50 and the 100, right? So there's a normal force push in there. So between these two right here, right? Between the 150 or the 100 and the 150 here, right? And then beneath all three, okay? So again, when we look at this, this has three different components to it. Each one of those are different normal forces for us, all right? So let's start at the top. So right at the top, we're looking at the floor being right there for us, all right? So the only thing that is gonna be pushing down is the 50 kilograms. So what we have to look at is, is what is the force of the 100 kilograms pushing back up against that 50 kilograms? So 50 times 9.8, we see that this right here at our 50 kilograms is gonna be 490 newtons, all right? Then we jump down. So now we're looking here, there's our floor, all right? So between the 100 and the 150, now last time we just had the 100. This time now we've added the, one, the 50 on top of it. Because of that, we're gonna add those two together, right? Because you got the 50 pushing down, you got the 100 pushing down, both of those two are pushing down on the 150, all right? So we see that's 1400 or 1470 newtons, okay? Lastly, beneath all three. So this is the actual legitimate floor way down here, right? So we've got, a 50, we've got 100, and we've got 150 all pushing down on this one. So what we see is all three of those masses are added together. So we've got 300 kilograms of mass pushing down on the basically the floor, right? So because that floor is then pushing back up with it, it's pushing back up with a force of 2,940 newtons. Now, if we were looking at shelving units, we would want this shelf to be rated at 3,000 newtons, okay? meaning that that would be the amount that it would hold. If all of a sudden we looked at it and said, hey, it's 2,500 Newton shelves, well, guess what? It wouldn't hold, okay? All right, so that's how we do stack blocks. We look at each one individually, and we kind of play off of that, all right? So the key for us to doing stack blocks is to move the quote-unquote floor, all right, to see what is pushing down against that, and then what does that force have to be pushed back up against? OK, um, I'm going to encourage you to hop out and try the homework questions that we have out there for this. Uh, it's the second question on your uh, homework sheet or your homework is uh, is a stack block ones. Um, so I'm going to encourage you to go ahead, and check that out um, again. I will be talking this concept on Wednesday again as a review for us to make sure that we feel comfortable with it prior to our quiz on Thursday and Friday. All right, uh, we will see you on the other side of this. Uh, take care. Hope you're doing well. All right.